At the very outset, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me over here. So my topics is echocardiography in diagnosis of congenital heart disease and also in the management. So as you all know, a fetus neonate infant or a child needs various kinds of echocardiographic evaluation for recognition, treatment, and follow-up of the congenital heart disease cases. And echocardiography is indicated also to know the course of the disease, timing of intervention, timing of surgeries, disease progression, complications, outcome of treatment, whether there is complete cure or there is residual problems. So to do that, we have to follow uh, two methods. One is sequential segmental analysis in which we consider the heart as three segments. First one is the atrium or the first floor. Second is the ventricular or the second floor. And third is the great arteries or the third floor. And each of them are in twins, in twin fashion with right and left relationship. And there is only very little possibilities of combination between them. So in sequential segmental analysis, you can get an easy solution for the complex lesions if you go according to this sequence. And this is also another method according to the direction of blood flow. So I think you all know about it. And in the photo, you are seeing that according to the direction of blood flow, you can uh, first see the venous channels and then uh, the atrium, then valves and then ventricles uh, like this. So to know your diagnosis, you have to use various known uh, methods like parasternal short axis, long axis, four chamber, subcostal, and parasternal short axis, suprasternal axis, like those of the adult views to find out all these diagnoses. And to know your task, to diagnose the congenital heart disease, you have to know in what sequence you will go. So if you see here, this is a normal heart and you are seeing for the first photo that we are seeing the abdominal situs and you are seeing in the second photo that in the spectral Doppler, we are confirming which one is aorta and whether it is on the left side or not. In other, photo, uh, in other videos, you are seeing the relationship between the uh, segments like first segment to the sec second and the third segments. And at the end, we see the uh, vascular uh, relationships like is, is, is there any abnormalities in any of the vessels? Is there any abnormalities in the aortic arch? The last video you are seeing is the aortic arch. And at the end, we should do the function of the left ventricle and if required, the function of the right ventricle. So how we will apply this knowledge in getting our diagnosis? So firstly, we have to go to the thoracoabdominal situs because in congenital heart disease, you, you must know the relationship of the aorta and inferior vena cava. You should know whether there is situs solitus or there is situs ambiguous. Again, in the situs ambiguous, you will find two types. One is the right isomerism, another is the left isomerism. In right isomerism, right-sided structures are duplicated in the body and there is no left-sided structure. And in the left, there is duplication of the left and there is no right-sided. So to know about the uh, position of the apex of the heart, there are three kinds of possibilities, levo, dextro, and meso. So in those cases, you have to place your probe like this photo. And you are seeing here that the apex of the heart is on the opposite side, that is on the right side. So these are the things you all know uh, where to place your probe. And then you have to come to the atrial connection. You have to see whether the systemic venous return is normal. Is there any interrupted IVC? You have to see whether pulmonary veins are normal. In this photo, you are seeing that in one of the uh, uh, photo, you are seeing this one video, uh, all the pulmonary veins are draining to coronary sinus. And here you are seeing that all the pulmonary veins are draining to uh, vertical vein to the SBC. Then you have to come according to the sequence to the atrial septum. You are seeing here that there is an ASD. So in this way, we, we should proceed. After atrial septum, we'll go to the ventricular inlet. And in the inlet, there may be single inlet. There may be double inlet. There may be absence of inlet in any side like mitral atresia or tricuspid atresia. There may be abnormalities of any of the valve like parachute mitral valve and others which are already mentioned by other speakers. So this is a double inlet kind of left ventricle. And in this kind of ventricle, there may be like transposition, associated transposition you are seeing in this picture. So in this video, you are seeing that there is association of the uh, TGA with the valve ventricular foramen. 
and sometimes there is because of the absence of the inlet there may be by ventricular hypoplasia so there may be hypoplastic right heart especially in association with the tricuspid atresia sometimes there is a uh, pulmonary and tricuspid atresia together so inlet and outlet affected together in those cases functioning in the ventricle is actually non functional so we can discard this uh, ventricle from the circulation because they are non functional and then we can go to the ventricular septum and you can see that there is a vhd various kind of vhd you know and we are not going to those topics and this is again one of the inlet defect tricuspid atresia you are seeing in the photo with a small VSD. So this VSD usually restrict the pulmonary blood flow and these kind of patients are good for future repair because they, their pulmonary circulation remain protected for the small VSD. And here is a Down syndrome is a very common chromosomal abnormality in our country and we often see these kind of cases every day at least like three four cases of every canal defect with the down syndrome in busy opd clinics and then you have to go to the ventricular outflow you know that ventricular outflow may be double single and there may be absence like pulmonary atresia aortic atresia so these are the possibilities and you are seeing one kind here is a very beautiful one you can see that this is a atrioventricular discordant connection you are seeing in this photo that the uh, tricuspid bulb is to the left side of the heart and again here is the dtga this is also a type of uh, ventricular arterial discordant connection and in this picture you are seeing that they are parallel, but you will not get parallel kind of relationship in, in case of uh, normal grad vessel relationship. Again, another kind of outlet disorder is the double outlet right ventricle. In this patient, you are seeing that there are aorta and pulmonary artery coming out from the same ven anterior ventricle, and there is association of the pulmonary stenosis. And if this kind of patient are associated with the pulmonary stenosis, this is good because pulmonary artery remain protected and they have good chance of future surgeries. About the vascular connections, there may be some abnormalities. This is a normal aortic arch, but there may be some abnormal aortic arch. There may be PDA. There may be like coronary fistula in this picture. And there may be like anomalous pulmonary venous drainage, as I mentioned already. And this is a patient we took possibly yesterday. is an interrupted aortic arch. You are seeing here that this is the, uh, this is the PDA maintaining the descending aorta circulation here. And the descending aorta visible from the PDA. So this PDA is looking like a false aortic arch here. And again, there is a very common disease nowadays is the Kawasaki disease. And we are getting almost in every day, we see some of the Kawasaki diseases. Here you are seeing the coronary aneurysmal dilatation. This photo was taken maybe a few days ago. And then abnormalities of the chamber, it was mentioned by other speakers also. You are seeing here that this is the uh, neoplasm like myxoma and this one is a ventricular septal device and there is atus vegetation inside. And this is a cardiomyopathy. So these are the disease of the chambers. I'm not going to the fetal because there are other speakers for fetal. Now role of the echocardiography in guiding percutaneous interventions. I can go quickly through this. So percutaneous par intervention, you know, these are basically fluoroscopy guided. But some of the uh, parts of the heart are not well visualized by fluoroscopy. So we need eco guideline in those cases. So I'm showing you some of these cases from our cath lab. So what modalities we use? We usually use transthoracic, especially in my cath lab for the minimalistic approach. We mostly use TT. And for few cases, transesophageal and ice, you know, is very expensive and it is not possible as, for us to provide. So some interventions we are doing in the cardiac ICU or in the NICU, these are velunatrial septostomy pericardiosynthesis, PDA device closure, and other interventions which are very common are ASD, VSD, PDA, PA for like things. And these are the rare kind of intervention like mitral bulb repair, LA occlusion, and percutaneous aortic and pulmonary valve implantation. Now, transeptal puncture is a very important procedure. It is actually not an intervention. It is, in a, it is a process just to enter into the left atrium. So we need to enter into left atrium for many reasons. And these are the reasons mentioned below. And ECO, uh, with the TTET and ICE, we can take guide for actually puncturing the right part of the septum to avoid pun uh, like puncture of the aorta. And even we can do some bubble test in the ECO to see whether the 
tip of the catheter is in the left atrium. Pericardiocentesis very easily can be done by EcoGuide. We don't need to use the cath lab and we don't need to use uh, so many resources from the cath lab. So this is one of our case we did by echocardiography guide. And then ASD device closer in every step we need echocardiography for selection of the patient, for procedural guidance, and for the post-procedural, like to see the outcome and to see the complications everywhere we need echo. So echo is the mainstay of uh, doing ASD device closer. And dream size, you know, minimum. Nowadays, we are doing even five millimeter minimum ring size. This is from one of my patient of the cath lab last week. And you are seeing here that this is the eco guided crossing of the ASD. This is an aneurysmal septum. And there are some other holes also, some other fenestrations. But we cross the largest one and we close it a single device. So you can see in the last video that the single device is used to close all these fenestrations at a time. And then this is the ASD device, then closer. You are seeing that this is uh, one minute. So this is the PFO you are seeing. So somebody confused what is PFO. This is a PFO, is a tunnel shape. And this is also maybe in the last week we did. And BSD device closer, this is from our cath lab. Uh, you can see here that eco-guided crossing of the BSD and then device closer. And you will be happy to know that sometime it take only five minutes for us to finish a BSD device closer procedure. And this is also a PDA device closer with the eco guide. At the same time, I'm showing you the simultaneous angiographic picture. And in some of the countries nowadays, people never took their patient to the cath lab, especially for the neonates for doing PDA device closer. This is another case in the cath lab for the uh, like pulmonary balloon valvuloplasty. And this is a case of the double intervention we did two days ago with the ASD and BSD device closer. And this was the eco guide taken during the procedure. And then you need also echocardiography for follow-up evaluation. You all know that we need to see how our patients are doing after intervention. Is there any complication? Is there any embolization? Is there any perforation? So every time we need to assess with the echo and then we discharge our patient if we find everything all right. So this is a BSD device closer and this is a BSD device closer done with the ADO1. You know this kind of devices for the PDA, but uh, we sometimes use this for the PD also, especially for the conical VHDs. So these are the procedure, these are the follow-up echoes actually after the procedures. And you were seeing here that coarctation was uh, done. And then on the next day, we're seeing whether this was adequate or not. So this is the coarctation balloon angioplasty in a new net. And this is the balloon valvuloplasty procedure. Now we also do echocardiography for the pediatric surgery people. They need echocardiography in their operation theater and their subject is known as critical care echocardiography. And sometimes they also need transesophageal echocardiography, but the critical care is usually with the help of the epicardial probe and you can convert a normal probe to echocardial probe by wearing a gloves. And a surgical perspective, you all know that during the repair, they need to see whether the repair is adequate, whether there is any residual problem, especially during the top repair. So in conclusion, two to three dimensional echocardiography using procedural transesophageal or uh, precordial transesophageal or intracardiac probe has prob probed as an essential part of imaging in selecting patient for intervention, safe intraprocedural guidance and effective post-procedural follow-up. In our center, we do most of our intervention under transthoracic echo guide and occasionally under transesophageal echo guide. Intracardiac echo probe is disposable, expensive, and still beyond our capacity to procure. Thank you very much for patient hearing.